Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope you're all doing great. It's been a couple of weeks since I've uploaded my last video. I've just been really busy here in the fish room, making some changes, doing some upgrades, and I've picked up some new fish. So in today's video, I thought I'd take you around the fish room, show you the changes, and just give you a quick update on everything happening here at TM Aquatics. So stick around, because you don't want to miss this one. All right, YouTube, in the interest of time, we are only going to focus on new additions and changes here in the fish room since my last fish room tour. And uh, what we're looking at right here is that we're actually out in the rec room, and this was my 75-gallon planted Endler's jungle tank. And as you can see, it has completely been transformed. This tank is being prepped for my group of L494 Plecos that I picked up from Eric Bodrock. Everything that was in the tank previously has been removed and gotten rid of, with the exception of some Anubias, my Bucephalandras, and uh, some Java Fern Narrow Leaf, and some Windelob Java Fern. Everything else was removed and gotten rid of. Uh, the substrate that I have in here is just a mixture of a, a really small gravel, 50% and 50% pool filter sand. The filtration is as simple as it gets. Just a couple of standard Hydro 5 sponge filters, one in each corner. And then I did pick up and uh, I'm trying these uh, Zis moving bed filters that was all the rage here on YouTube back in uh, October, November, December. And uh, we'll see how those work out. The box filters here, they're just temporary. I was running some uh, pre-cycled media through there, but right now I just have some carbon. Um, one of my dither fish that I have in here, these are just $2 cherry barbs, and um, one of the male cherry barbs got wedged between the sponge filter and the glass over here and really wore himself raw and uh, started to get some fungus uh, where he was raw. So I added some uh, medications to the water. He looks... 100% better than he did. He still has a little bit of white fungus on his head, but it's really starting to clear up fast now. So I'm going to pull the meds, do a big water change, but that's that's why I have the um, the uh, box filters full with carbon up here in the front. But now as far as scaping, um, my Pleco tanks are not meant to be aquascaped. I just like to make them look, you know, nice because I enjoy looking at my tanks. But um, I do have another piece of driftwood that I ordered or purchased online and that was shipped and should be here early next week. And that'll be on the left side of the tank here in which I will also be attaching some of the Anubias to that driftwood. And then I do have some larger uh, boulders and stones I uh, collected locally that I'll add to the tank. And that'll kind of tie everything together. Now over here this plecohyde pretty simple pretty straightforward i know i'll be asked about it so i'll just go ahead and explain what it is it's three pieces of pre-cut tile that you can purchase at menards for like two dollars a piece and these pieces of tile are like um, five or six inches by 16 and they're like two dollars a piece so there's three pieces there's one down here on the base and i just put a little bit of substrate over it to kind of hide it and then these four round caves are actually watering spikes that you can buy on Amazon. You get four for $10. And I'll go ahead and post a link down below in the description. Then another tile. And then these four caves up here, these are one and a half inch square caves. And I purchased those from kensfish.com, but they're actually plecocave.com uh, caves, but uh, Ken does sell them as well. And then on top, another tile to kind of you know hold it all together and uh, a real inexpensive but yet very effective pleco motel and pleco hide so then you can see all my little pieces of bucephalandra up on top uh, manzanita branch etc but but that is the tank uh, really glad to have made the change uh, honestly i was getting terribly bored with the endlers i had them for a few years i wanted to get rid of the canister filters and make my fish room canister filter free and uh, most importantly, I got rid of all the duckweed that I had in that tank. So I can actually put my hands and uh, arms in this tank and not come out with a full layer of duckweed, which is kind of nice. So, but, uh, but I needed to make the change because I really needed the tank for the group of L494 Plecos that I picked up from Eric Bodrock. And that was really the primary driver behind the change. 
Anyways, enough on this tank. Let's head back to the fish room and check out what's going on back there. Okay, so back here in the fish room, this is my shrimp cull tank, but I decided to add some fish to this tank. There's actually only two fish in here, and this is the Nanostomus mortenthaleri, and this is the coral red pencil fish, also known as the Peruvian pencil fish, the ruby red pencil fish, and uh, just a really interesting fish. I only have one male and one female. Unfortunately, they do uh, suggest keeping these in groups because they can be somewhat aggressive as far as pencil fish go. Um, so you want a, a little larger group to kind of spread that aggression out. My LFS only had two males and one female left in stock and uh, I picked up one male and of course the female. This here is the male and uh, very easy to differentiate. Uh, at the base of the um, dorsal fin, the males will get very distinctive white pattern on them and you can see the white on that dorsal fin. That is the male and the females don't have that white pattern on their dorsal fin. I don't know where she's at. She was actually putting the chase on him for several days and I think he's kind of turned the tables a little bit and uh, now he's the dominant. Now they say that these are not shrimp safe and uh, I don't know if that's uh, true or not. They are a micro predator and I do have some shrimp in here still. You can see one up on the leaf there on that Nana Petite. There's a couple down here and uh, I think we already saw him go after one of the larger shrimp. Now maybe they've picked off a few. I don't know. They, they, will, they will approach and go after anything that moves in the tank. See, there he goes. But they know that that shrimp's too big for them, so they, they're not, I haven't seen them actually eat any shrimp, but like I said, this is a cold tank. If they pick a few off, so be it. Oh, here's the female. She's back up there in the corner, but she's doing fine. She's not beat up or in any danger. Um, they do require, or not require, but they do suggest keeping these in heavily planted tanks. And as you can see, this tank is not the most planted. I might add some floating plants to it just to give them a little more space to um, hide, a little more area for them to hide and for that female to get away from the male. The water is tannin stained right now. I have a couple of almond leaves in there. I dropped in a bunch of alder cones because they do prefer uh, a lower pH. And the pH in here is around 7.72. I'm trying to get that down to 6.65. I'll probably have to filter some peat through here. So I might drop in a box uh, filter with some peat and um, see if we can't get this uh, the, the pH down a little bit. Um, these things can be a little expensive. A lot of people refer to these as the $20 pencil fish. In fact, I've seen them online for even more than $20, $22, $23 a piece. Uh, my LFS was selling them for $13 a piece. I thought that was a good deal, but uh, not a really high demand fish, but also not a very common fish in the hobby. They're not very common because they come out of a very, very isolated area in Peru, and they are an endangered fish. And uh, they don't collect a lot of them. What also makes them a little more expensive is the fact that they can be challenging to breed. And that is my ultimate goal would be to breed these fish. Uh, I just hope that I can you know, get a few more, but if not, I will work with the two that I have and keep my fingers crossed. Um, but because they're limited in their range and supply and a little more difficult to breed, um, that's why the prices are so high. Not a lot of people willing to spend that type of money for a fish really that uh, can be, you know, kind of takes the place of a, a $2 Tetra, you know, and, um, you know, but I, I really liked them. I like the color. I like the pattern. I really like their behavior. I washed them for quite a while at the LFS and just thought they were really a cool fish and something different that I've never tried before. So, but uh, yeah, we do hope to breed these and, um, you know, fingers crossed, but I don't know much about them. I've never kept them before. They've been, uh, I've been feeding them really small foods, live baby brine shrimp. They've been, uh, there are a bunch of little, there we're a bunch of like little white bugs and stuff in this tank and um, little copepods and things like that. And uh, they do go after those and prey on those. It's kind of fun to watch these guys actually. Really enjoying them. But anyways, the uh, coral red pencil fish and um, yeah, enough on that. Let's uh, let's keep moving.
Now down here, underneath my workbench, and this is between the Dual 75s and my shrimp rack, uh, this is the newest tank to be added to the fish room. And uh, when space is a premium, you put tanks wherever you can fit them. And um, this is where this tank ended up. This is a 40 gallon breeder. And this tank is exclusively for growing out baby plecos. I have my oldest group of L134 plecos in here. Currently there's 28. I'll go ahead and lift up that sponge filter. You'll see a bunch back there. And then there's a bunch back behind uh, that Hydro 4 uh, filter back there. Now they are for sale, but currently only for local pickup here in Minnesota. I was shipping them with the post office express service, but after numerous delays out of the St. Paul area here, and uh, one of which resulted in uh, a DOA, I have stopped shipping them with the post office, and I'm currently looking for a more reliable uh, shipping partner. And once I've decided on which carrier to work with, I will um, put them back up for sale, add them to the Get Gills website, and um, we'll keep or we'll start shipping them out again. But they came out of the 20 gallon long uh, grow out tank. Let's head over there and check out that. So over here is the 20 gallon long grow out tank that they were in, and this is directly above the pencil fish that we uh, talked about just a couple minutes ago. In here now, I have a younger group of L134s. There are either 40 or 41 in here. I think it's 41, actually. You can see just a huge bio load back there behind that sponge filter. But they needed more space. They were all over here on the main adult L134 tank uh, hanging out in breeder boxes. So definitely needed that 40 breeder to uh, move the larger fry to and then uh, clear this tank out so so these guys could move in but anyways a whole bunch of them nice looking group of fry and uh, like the others they will be for sale eventually but these guys still have a couple of months before they're ready all right so the last thing that I want to share with you in this video is the upgraded air system back here in the fish room and I did put out a separate video on this a couple of weeks ago, but it didn't get many views. I thought I would just add this uh, into this video as well. But I upgraded my air system from eight individual air pumps to a single Gemco LPH80 linear air piston pump. And uh, this is probably the best upgrade that I've made in the fish room since I've uh, started this fish room a year and a half ago. Uh, they are expensive, but worth every penny in my opinion. They're extremely quiet and efficient, and this thing has given me more air than the, than the uh, other eight pumps were combined by far. It's given me more air than what I can actually use right now, and um, yeah, I'm just really happy that I made the, uh, made the switch. But in addition to the new Gemco LPH80, I've also been changing my sponge filters around and I've been switching to Hydro sponge filters and uh, I have a bunch of Hydro 5 Pro sponge filters back here. Um, out in the rec room we started with that 75 gallon tank and I did put a couple of Hydro 5 sponge filters in that tank but those are the regular Hydro sponge filters not the Pro and just putting these up side by side you can see the difference in the pore size. Uh, in the tank that's a Hydro 5 Pro series or Pro Sponge. This is a Hydro 4, but it's just the standard Hydro Sponge, and you can see the difference in that pore size. So these are going to um, do a good job filtering really fine particulates in the uh, water column, but these with the larger pore size are going to last much longer between maintenance. And if you're familiar with my channel and my fish room, you know that most of my tanks, my primary focus is plecos. And plecos are an extremely messy, high bio load, waste producing fish. So uh, I had to take out sponge filters every week and a half to two weeks and wring them out. And that's not gonna be the case with these Hydro 5 Pro Series sponges. Uh, back here, that is the sponge filter that I'm swapping out in the fish room. That is one of those Chinese XY 380s. Uh, they sell on eBay for like five or six bucks a piece and they do a pretty good job. Um, but I have to take those out every week and a half to two weeks and wring them out because they get so clogged up with all the waste from the plecos. These Hydro 5s, you can see that big pore size. These things are probably gonna go you know, a month, two months before I have to take them out and wring them out. So. 
I'll probably do it at least once a month regardless. But, um, but yeah, I've been upgrading those. And uh, what I like about these Hydro 5s versus those, um, those Chinese XY380s, not just the pore size, but just how much larger they are. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. This is one of those XY380s. You can see how much larger that Hydro 5 is. So definitely going to be able to go much longer uh, between uh, any maintenance for the sponge filters. And um, that's just going to make it a lot easier on me back here. So anyways, that's the uh, those are the changes. Those are the new additions and uh, everything we have going on back here in the fish room. I just want to say thank you for uh, stopping by and watching another one of my videos. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them down below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and take a second, hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And like always, until the next one, thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you all later.